Hello friends, welcome to a new 3ds Max tutorial. This is Gökçe from cgk.com and today we are going to learn uh, about some parametric modifiers. There are a lot of modifiers in 3ds Max. Uh, I know I know that we have talked about these a lot. Like uh, under the modify tab, you have these all these modifiers. Uh, we haven't seen seen them all, but I'm not going to, going to show uh, all of them to you because they do various various things. But uh, for this lesson and the next lesson and the next one, for three lessons, I'm going to, I want to show you some parametric modifiers I use in here. Like in the previous lesson, we have seen the cloth modifier and, uh, or you know about the edit poly modifier and stuff. But uh, for these lessons, I'm going to show you some modifiers that are going to help you uh, speed things up a little bit. And they are parametric and I really like to use them whenever I can. Let me show you some and you will get the idea, in my opinion, why uh, it will uh, help us uh, speed up. And let's start with the taper modifier. It's uh, in T. You, can, you know that if you click here and hit T, uh, it will directly take you to T and taper is the first one. And you can see that uh, we have a gizmo. We call this yellow box a gizmo. And you can, if you go to gizmo, you can manipulate or change the position of this. This is our gizmo. This is a placeholder that represents our volume, I guess. And we have some properties in here. Amount uh, is the amount of taper. I I'm sure you are familiar with the word or uh, term taper. Uh, I I've heard it. I I'm a mechanical engineer, so I've heard it in molds, in sand molds. Uh, you usually give five degrees uh, or something like that, a taper to the shape uh, to be able to pull it out from the sand without uh, damaging the mold. Uh, that's what we did actually uh, back then. Uh, right now, I don't think there are much sand molds left, but whatever. Uh, and you you see what it does. It gives the uh, walls, side walls of the object uh, a little bit of a slope. Now, I know that uh, because we know edit poly, if we delete this and add an edit poly and hit 4 and select the top face and scale this down, I know that this does the same thing. It seems like this does the same thing. Uh, and you are right in a way, but uh, if there are more details on the object, what, what these modifiers do is it can manipulate more than four. It can affect a lot of vertices at once. That's the advantage of it. Uh, what I mean with this is, let's say we have, a, we have some height segments on the box. And then we add an edit poly. And then we take the top face and scale this down. You can see that it doesn't do the same thing. If we assign a taper in here and change the amount, you can see that it changes the position of a lot of vertices at once, uh, which is very important for us. Now, I know that you will say that if we hit F4, this is uh, the same shape and you are right uh, again. But let's say, uh, of course, I uh, thought of an example uh, as always. Let's say we want to model something like this. Uh, now here we have uh, different shapes like uh, an, a ring in here and an indent in here and then it repeats and then it grows up as it uh, goes up, right? Uh, scales up as it grows up, uh, goes up. So uh, how can we create a shape like this uh, easily? Not, not uh, like I don't want to change the scale of each ring by hand because that will be a tedious job, uh, but I want to use taper for this. Okay. Uh, actually, let's keep it here. Okay, let's delete, get rid of this box. And start with a cylinder. Now I'm going to create the cylinder. Uh, I'm going to uh, decrease the height segments to 1. Uh, I'm going to increase the sides to 32. I'm going to move the position to uh, the origin. And let's uh, keep the radius. I'm not going to do this with exact uh, dimensions, but let's uh, guess some numbers. I'm going to uh, change the radius to 6 meters and I'm going to change the height to uh, 3 meters. Uh, I guess maybe this should change to 8 meters. Okay. Now uh, I'm going to add an edit poly on top. Hit 4, select the top face. I'm going to create an inset, which will create uh, something like this, as you know from before. And then I'm going to add an extrude on top. And this will represent one of the uh, floors, I guess. Okay. 
Now uh, let's create some copies of this. I'm going to hold shift and pull this up. And uh, let's uh, make them instance uh, with each other. Uh, I guess it, yeah, no, no, uh, I, we need to keep them copy because uh, we will add the taper modifier and we don't want them affected the same way. Uh, so let's keep this as a copy. Let's uh, input 11 uh, stories uh, for this example. And I'm going to select all these and then add a taper. And you can see that if I increase the amount, it will directly change the shape uh, right away. And this would be a lot more harder or a lot more time consuming to do if we were using uh, the edit poll itself. Now uh, I can also choose the gizmo and bring this down. Uh, I don't because I don't want the radius of the bottom face to change. So let me show that to you again. If you choose the gizmo and bring it down here, uh, when you change the amount, it won't affect the bottom radius and it will only affect the top radiuses. And you can see right away that we can create a complex shape like this. And I know that this is not that much complex, but I, I'm like imagining more complex shapes in my head right now. I, I recommend you to do the same. Uh, you can add a lot of detail to this. Uh, let's uh, try that as well. Uh, let's say we want to add a detail to one of these. I'm going to select one of these, go to edit poly, uh, hit alt S because I don't want to see the end result for now. And uh, let's say we want to add an extrusion here, for example. And then you can see that if I go back to the taper, it will it will keep the shape, the end shape, and it will behave accordingly to the taper, which is very cool. And you can see that we can change the base shape later on as well. Okay, that was the first parametric modifi modifier I wanted to show you. As you can see, they will save us a lot of time. I recommend you to play with them always and try to create different shapes with them. Okay, the second shape, uh, the second modifier is the noise modifier, which I use a lot again. I use this to create grounds, like uh, a random surface uh, uh, that I want to use as a ground. Actually, we have done this uh, example uh, once before, but I told you not to follow it. This time I will ask you to follow it. Uh, I wanted to show you the distance uh, material of co uh, for Corona. I, I got ahead of myself at, at that lesson. Okay. Now, uh, if I hit F4, you can see that we have few uh, vertices. Uh, the key for using these parameter modifiers are you need to set the right amount of vertices because let's assign a noise to this first and see that uh, nothing happens. Uh, I'm going to, uh, what this does is it will create random um, heights in this object. Uh, if I increase Z, uh, let's uh, input uh, one meter for this, for example, you can see that it looks a little bit weird. If you increase, go back down here to the plane uh, mode and increase the segments to 200 by 200. You can see that when I go back to the noise, you will see the real thing. It was trying to create this shape in here. So I recommend you to increase the amount, uh, the segment amount to cope with the uh, modifier. This is uh, true for all the modifiers we're going to see throughout these three lessons. So if I decrease the Z and increase it slowly, you can see that uh, it will increase slowly. And I guess you can see what's happening more clearly uh, with this. You can also introduce uh, randomness in the X axis and the Z axis as well, uh, Y axis as well, sorry. <laughs> you can see it, it's very trippy. And uh, you can change the noise scale. Uh, you can with, with noise scale. I want. I recommend you to think about this uh, circle, for example, circular shape, and think about its radius. And when I increase or decrease this, it will increase this radius or increase this radius. Let's try it and see what happens. When I decrease it, as you can see, the radius of one noise uh, gets smaller. And if I increase it, uh, it gets. Uh, larger. Okay. So how do I use this to create a uh, ground uh, or uh, yeah, ground is right, I guess. Uh, let's say we are on a hilly, we are on a countryside with hills and grass and everything. I want to create a scene like that. I'm going to introduce some randomness in the z-axis and some small randomnesses in the x and y uh, x size. 
And then I'm going to place my camera wherever I want. Let's say we want to take a shot from here and I'm going to create a camera. Uh, I, I clicked on this button. This is, this comes with Corona. Uh, this toolbar comes with Corona and this is the Corona camera from uh, current view. So you can see that right away we have something like a landscape. I know that this is not perfect. Uh, it's a good thing, a good um, base to start from, but we need more randomness to make this uh, look more believable. And I guess we need more depth uh, to make this more believable. But this is a good start, and I think you understand what I'm uh, going for uh, with this modifier in here. Okay, this was the noise modifier. Now we have two more modifiers, uh, which are twist and bend. Uh, let me show them to you quickly, and then we are going to combine them, uh, two of them, and use them in one example. And uh, I want to also show you that you can combine these parameters as well. You can, you could assign noise and taper on, on one object. You could assign bend and taper on one object, for example. And we're going to see that in a minute. Okay, so we have a box like this. Uh, again, let's introduce some height segments to use this. And let's add a bend modifier on top. If you change the angle, you can right away see that it bends the object. You can change the direction, the bend direction, which is very cool. By the way, uh, whenever I uh, uh, talk about bend, I instantly remember that you can use these modifiers with animation as well, which is very cool. I'm going to, I, I, I can't uh, resist. I'm going to show what I mean to you. If you enable auto key, I know that this is again, uh, very ahead of our, ourselves right now, but uh, I really like to have fun with these. If you enable the auto key and uh, drag your current time to a hundred, to the hundred, hundredth frame, and change the direction, for example, increase the di direction. You can see that we have some brackets, red brackets in here, which means that this is animated. Let's get rid of the auto key and push play. And you can see that it instantly animates. And yes, the, the, uh, in animation, they use these modifiers a lot as well. And they um, utilize these very much. Okay. All right, now, uh, as I told you, you can use bend uh, to bend these things. You can change the X size as well, by the way. You can bend this in this direction as well, or this direction in here. All of them may come handy for different situations, but this is the more obvious one, I guess. So uh, I wanted to show this to you. Again, you can change the gizmo position, by the way. If you change it, you can have different effects. Check, uh, check, out, check this out as well. Okay, and the second modifier I want to talk about is the twist, the fourth one, sorry. And when you increase the amount, you can see that it bends or twists the object. Uh, again, in a, according to the axis you uh, define in here, of course. If you change it to Y, you can see that it twists like this. If you change it to X, it twists like this, okay? And again, uh, all of them may come handy in different situations. Okay, so let's combine these, uh, the bend and the twist modifier and try to create a shape like this. In Turkey, we call this uh, burma bilezik. I don't know <laughs> what to call it in English. Uh, but th this is a, a classical uh, wedding gift or uh, an expensive wedding gift, actually. Uh, or uh, old ladies uh, exchange these golds. And uh, we call them days, but I don't know how to call, call it in English. Uh, where they gather up and uh, cook some delicious stuff and exchange gold. Whoever needs it, they exchange it uh, with each other. Whatever. <laughs> now let's uh, try to create this shape. I want to create a cylinder for this. Uh, let's uh, input two for the radius. Actually, one for the radius. And for the height, I want to input uh, 30 centimeters. I want to decrease the radius to 0.5 as well. And I want to move this to the origin. I want to hold shift and create a copy of this. Uh, actually, before we create a copy, let's introduce some height segments uh, so that we can bend and twist this easily. I've introduced 120, but you can play with it. And I've created a copy of this, okay? Now I'm going to select two of these. Yes, by the way, you can select multiple objects as well. Uh, we did this in the taper one, taper example. 
and you can create to select two two of these and then add uh, the twist modifier on top and you can see that you can instantly create this burma shape <laughs> twisted shape uh, let's input uh, actually let me open up the calculator uh, I'm going to I want to turn them in a degree which is multiplied by 360 so uh, that the, the ends would meet with each other uh, you will see what I mean in a minute but let's uh, multiply this by 6 for example and it's 2160 yeah yeah I guess this is good enough uh, you can play with the sh uh, shapes, the radiuses and whatever. Uh, you can even uh, change the position of these uh, cylinders and try to um, bring them uh, in each other a little bit, for example. But whatever, uh, you will see as you play with it. And now let's uh, introduce the bend modifier in, in here and then let's bend this. Uh, when you bend this in a 360 degree, then you can see that we have a ring like this. Uh, I know the dimensions doesn't seem right, but uh, I'm sure that you can understand how to play and manipulate them. Actually, let's try to change one of the heights. Uh, and see what happens. Yeah, I've changed them both. Uh, what I need is uh, I need to disable the band for now. Yeah, and let's uh, choose the gizmo and put, bring this up. Mm, let's delete the band and reassign. It. I guess yeah, it, because the yeah because the original gizmo is uh, smaller. Oh, sorry, the, because the original gizmo is smaller, uh, it created the sh same shape. But you can uh, if you reassign it. Actually, you could uh, scale the gizmo as well, but it would be a little bit more confusing to do. So let's uh, do it like this. Yeah, you can see that this would be a tedious shape to create with uh, Edit Poly, right? If you if you try to create this shape with edges and extruding the edges and stuff, it would be it would take a lot of time. But you can see that it takes just under a minute, I guess, in uh, to do it with some parametric modifiers. So I really recommend you to check these out, play with them and see uh, if you come up with interesting stuff please share them in uh, our facebook group cgk just search for it in facebook or you can hashtag cgk and share them in instagram to for me to uh, catch them thanks for listening if you find this useful please hit the like button hit the subscribe button hit the notification bell next to the subscribe button thanks for listening see you in the next lesson everybody